if you want to make a difference and leave a legacy, I would tell you to find a mentor and seek knowledge. Then turn around, find someone else who needs a mentor and continue to pass the torch. All right, we are on another episode of Pass the Torch podcast. Today we have Brandy Morgan on the show. Brandy is a developer, a designer, and a doer who could out hustle Jay Z, which is a very bold statement. Um, we're going to get Brandy to explain that one. But uh, yeah. we are absolutely lucky to have her on the show. She's also a YouTuber, so we're going to get her to talk about that too. Brandy, welcome to Pass the Torch podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So doing a lot of things. Uh, when I first came out across your, your Instagram, I was immediately intrigued. Uh, women in tech, women developers, it's not something that uh, I've seen a lot. And I think it's really awesome. My sister, younger sister, is actually an aspiring uh, web developer, excuse me, web developer as well. So I was immediately like, I got to talk to her um, and find out what the story is. So what, what's your why and, and how'd you get on this journey? Yeah, for sure. Um, my why is there's a few different things behind, you know, why I work so hard or why I'm in tech and why I like to build things. And one of the main reasons is freedom, you know, the freedom to build ideas, the freedom to work on different projects, freedom to be around people that I love, like family. And I think like a lot of times today we get in this like crazy hustle mindset and we like want to work, 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 but then we forget about like our family yeah. and our parents yeah. or like, our relatives or anything like that. And I think for me being a developer, it gives me the ability to work remote and I can actually like, work with my family or be near them and stuff like that. And I think that's really important, very important to me anyways. Yeah. No, definitely. So you say you wrote, uh, you work remote. Is that is it freelance or do you work uh, contracting with a company or uh, how does that work exactly? Yes, yeah, so I work for a company right now called Showflow. We build live event production software, and more specifically, I do React Native. So I'm building out their mobile application right now. Yeah. And I'm only remote part of the time, but they give um, they give me unlimited vacation days as well yeah, wow. and re- <laughs> that's awesome. yeah the reason yeah that was kind of stipulated because i love um speaking at conferences and kind of giving back to the community that was something that i really wanted to continue to do while i worked there yeah. and so they were more than accommodating for that and they also know that family is very important and my family doesn't live close mm-hmm. and so taking you know a week off or two weeks off to go work remote where my parents are is something that's okay. Yeah, no, definitely. With them. Mm-hmm. That, that's cool that they, yeah. they could agree on that. And I'm a hundred percent with you. Family is absolutely important. So very cool that mm-hmm. that is part of the deal. Yeah. So when did you start in tech? Was it as you got older uh, in, in high school or college or was it, back when you were younger? Because this is, this is probably the biggest part of the story. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was in college and I was working at a mobile software development company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And I was doing marketing and, and I, helped, um, I helped them start this mobile conference. And it was all around how mobile can transform your business. Yeah. And the only thing that I could not do was build the actual mobile application for the conference. So I could get the speakers, I get the sponsors, I could do all the logistics, all the planning, all the promoting, yeah. um, anything like that was totally fine, but I could not build the mobile app and that drove me nuts. And so I was talking with um, our CSIO, which is our chief strategy and innovation officer there. Oh, wow. And wow. Yeah, he's awesome. He's actually now at Google. Um, <laughs> but he was he had told me to learn JavaScript to yeah. start off with. And so I started kind of 
playing around with it. I did Code Academy for a while. Like every night I would go home from work, I would just start programming and just try to learn and retain as much as I could. Yeah. And then I finally just decided if I was going to be like serious about this, I needed to go back to school. And that was something that was just that's very specific to me. I wanted to be immersed in it. Yeah. So any smart person, I picked the closest school, <laughs> which was 1,500 miles away in Florida, yeah. and decided to um, try my hand at programming. So I went to Full Sail University and got a degree wow. yeah. in um, web development and design. And so I graduated June of 2016. Oh, wow. And while I'm yeah, while I was there, I got an internship pretty quickly at a local agency and started just diving into what they were doing. And they ended up, you know, wanting to hire me. And they hired me basically right out of school. Um, very and cool. so that was my very first job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was incredible. And and being interested in tech and, and, and being interested in web development, um, Especially for people out there who one don't know how to read a line of code today, um, yeah. I am absolutely so. I'm one of those guilty people who I had. I have a free Code Camp account right now. <laughs> that okay. the streak is not there, and I have a Code Academy account, uh, account that I wasn't using, so I, I shut it down. But I'm absolutely in love with with coding and and what it can do. Like if you have an idea and the creativity to just think it up, there's the possibility that you can build it through code. And I, I think that's really awesome. What do you say to someone who's sitting there and they think this is uh, impossible? It's not. I thought that it was impossible. I actually failed my first, one of my first programming classes in college. And they told me, they're like, Brandy, you're not cut out for this. And I was <laughs> yeah. just like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. And I think that's what, for people that think it's impossible, they look at it like it's something that can't happen because there's a too big of a leap that they have to take to get into it. Mm -hmm. Just if you want it, commit to it yeah. and go out and put the time in. Um, while I was in school, I every single night after class or in the mornings, I was doing tutorials. I was building my own projects. Um, by the end of it, I had built a mobile game for like final project that they have there. Nice. And by doing all that stuff and like, you know, taking on different frameworks, different languages, you can really kind of pick your path, you know, it's like choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. Programming has so many different things. You can be front end and just that is you can do WordPress, you can do Drupal, you can just do like CSS, you can do SVG animations, you can like specialize in these things. Yeah. All the different frameworks, React, Angular, um, anything like that. So it's just kind of getting in there, getting your feet wet, playing around, not being scared of not <laughs> knowing what you're doing. None of us have any idea what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's no joke. We really don't. I think we, you know, there's the joke that's like half the time you don't know what you're doing and then half the time you're like you're so excited because you don't even know why it works <laughs> yeah. and that does happen you know so that's my advice is just be persistent yeah. you know if it's something that you really want to go after do it you know dive into it uh, absolutely like one of, my, one of my first projects on free code camp it's i think anyone who's been on there they know this phrase and it's hello world but it's the coolest thing ever <laughs> when you're sitting there and all mm -hmm. you're working on is HTML and CSS and, and you know, you're like, Oh, this is, this is crazy. But I just changed the background. I just changed the font. And then you continue to build because you talk about react. A lot of people are there like, okay, I have no clue what react is, but I, what, how, how do you even choose a language? How did you choose a language? Like, where do you start? So, um, that is a great question. So for myself, um, in school, we learned um, a few different languages, and I kind of gravitated towards JavaScript, mm -hmm. which is a front-end language. And you use JavaScript with any front-end framework like React yeah. and Angular. And I chose that just because 
I felt very comfortable. I felt comfortable with it mm. and you could do so much with it. And I still have not even like tipped the iceberg with my knowledge on it because okay. it's constantly changing. It's constantly being updated. And there's a framework that comes out every single day with JavaScript. Wow. Um, and as far as picking a framework, I picked um, React Native, which is a little different. And the reason why I did that was um, my my boyfriend at the time, who's actually my fiance now, nice. was a programmer. <laughs> he's still is a programmer. Um, <laughs> and he was working with React. And so he was like, you would love React. Try it out. And he goes, just learn something and become comfortable with it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so that's kind of the route that I went because it was also helpful that he knew it so he could give me guidance in that sense and kind of steer me when I was going off course type thing. I love it. And, and since you brought it up, tell, tell us about your boyfriend, how you guys met. <laughs> I'm going to ask the story. Oh, this, or your, your fiance, oh, this, excuse me. Yeah, yeah we're getting married in about two weeks. Nice, um, yeah. Yeah, we met, so for all you tech or nerds of any type we met at a tech meetup nice so go to meetups meet people in your community it's worth it you never know who you'll meet that's it mm -hmm. and now you you're yeah. able to help each other through projects and and enjoy personal life and everything so that's it's, awesome yeah it's it's wonderful. We're both, yeah. we both work a lot. We're both very passionate for what we do. He has his own company now mm. with his brothers and they program and it's fun because we both have each other to bounce these ideas off of. And we actually understand what we're talking about, no. which I think is unusual. It's generally one or the other. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. Are you, are you competitive? You guys competitive? Very, I'm competitive. He is not. He'll let me win all day. Oh, that's, yeah. That sounds like a good fiance <laughs> then. <laughs> Smart guy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. So what, if your company or if you were working on your own, what would be your dream uh, project in, in web development? Oh, that's tough. Do you mean like what it would be for or? Yeah, we could talk about what it would be for or what type of project uh, you'd want to build. Would it be a website in general, maybe for a nonprofit or would you want to look, are you looking into uh, internet of things? Like what would be, if you, if you had no restrictions on your time, uh, no restrictions on money or resources, what would you want to work on? That is such a great question. Um, Wow. Okay. I, this would also, I would need to learn a lot about this. Um, <laughs> so there, it would not, not, let's think, how can I word this? So there's so many different projects out there right now going on. Like, have you heard of Watson? I have. Like, I have yes. Um, and so yes. The, they're doing a lot of cool things with that. There's also these different health, health kits. Yeah. Um, that would be really interesting to me. I, I know I would know nothing about what I'm doing, but I feel like it would actually be meaningful work. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can get caught up on just making money, like because we all need to make money. Yeah, you know, yeah. Be real. <laughs> you know, we have to make a living. Um, but I think it would be cool to actually do something that was meaningful. Definitely. That actually had an impact on people. You know, for a better thing than just making their time faster because. In reality, technology just makes us more and more impatient. Absolutely. You know? No, that's cool. Definitely. And as long as people like you keep thinking like that uh, and want to use their, their technical talents to build, innovate, and, and with purpose, like, I'm super excited about the future of, of what we're going to get into. And a lot of this stuff, we're, we're just starting to scratch the surface when it comes to new languages, like you said, frameworks coming out. But... Not only that, um, just the different applications, like with the Amazon Alexa, uh, Internet of Things, and, and oh. virtual reality, Amazon is, reality. Yeah. Amazon's a very cool company. They are, they are just on top of their stuff over there. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Bezos is, is a mastermind, and... I don't know what kind of coffee he drinks or what food he eats. Like, I don't know, his cows eat special grass or something. I don't know, but he's a genius. And, and 
if I could just have one conversation with him, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, I would pick his brain. Um, I would ask him nonstop questions, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you keep doing this, you'll probably get there. Yeah, yeah. maybe one day. He's got a 70 year old Jeff Bezos. <laughs> He's like, all right, ask me any question you want. <laughs> no, I'm definitely ready for it. So, being in tech, and especially thinking about my, my younger sister, um, how is the community, because I've definitely read um, and, and have discussions on, there's not that many women in tech. It it's, seems like it's, it's an intimidating um, you know, platform or, or place for people to work. Like, what has been your experience? And I know that's not the focus, but it, I think it's awesome that you are, you are continuing to be a pioneer in the field and showing that everyone can do this. This is something that you should be passionate about and, and work hard on. Yeah, I think um, that's a question that I get asked a lot. Um, and it can be by like anybody, because yeah. I'm the only female at the company I'm at right now. Wow. And, wow. Yep, and there's 13 of us. And so I'm the only female. Um, there's two, technically two other um, programmers or engineers there. Mm -hmm. um, but the people, the my boss is great. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty. That's been really fine. Before that, I was at a company where I had a um, a female engineer there, mm -hmm. and so when I was at school, I had heard her give a talk, mm -hmm. and she is this. She I don't know exactly how tall she is, but she's shorter and she's little and petite, but she was so strong with. Just she just carried herself with such a presence that you believed everything she said. Yeah. She just had that confidence about her. And I was like, that is somebody I want to work with. I want to learn to be like that. Yeah. And so I approached her and was like, hey, you know, I really like your style. Can I like can you mentor me? Which is funny because like she was like, Yeah, you know, send me an email or something. <laughs> and so I sent an email and I never heard back. Sent her a message on LinkedIn, never heard back. And I was took it so personally. Um, and then I ended up running into her probably two months later at another event. And I just ran up to her and I was like, hey, so I emailed you a bunch of times, like wanting uh, to grab coffee. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't check that email. And I, I don't check LinkedIn. Yeah. So I was like, Shoot. so then she added me on Facebook and had me come in an interview at her company and that's where I got the internship wow. and so I got to work with her and she was my mentor during that entire time and it was awesome because she really taught me how to have a voice in a meeting yeah and how to be respectful of everybody and also to not have to you don't have to be one of the boys um to get a point across you know you um, I'm not big, like into like, I'm not vulgar. I don't swear really. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was kind of a huge thing to see a female that could be very assertive and very intelligent as well and get her opinions and her point across in such a like ele elegant way, you know, yeah. and that was awesome. And I talked to her today. She moved out to California, yeah. um, for a programming job, but yeah, yeah that was that was really big, and I think like she actually really taught me that it doesn't really matter if you are a female or male in the industry, if you treat people with respect, mm -hmm. they're gonna they should you know generally treat you with respect back. You oh, know, right. you do come across like certain people that I be. Um, I don't really know what the word would be, but once they once they warm up to you, they it kind of goes away. You yeah. know. Yep. Absolutely. There's so I think. You can't go in thinking that people think a thing about you. You can't go in with preconceived notions about somebody or how other people think about you or even care, you know. If you're always treating people with respect, you're always, you know, have a smile on your face for the most part and you're just nice, people are going to, you know, see that and reciprocate it back to you. 100%. And so that's kind of, yeah, that's been my experience. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. And... You're absolutely right. I've had the same experience, and 
Yeah, if I if I went in there and, and reciprocated the negativity, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. But being optimistic, just being happy yourself and, and continuing to do what you're doing, um, for the most part, you're right. People will tend to start to warm up to you and they're like, well, the issue is really with them. And if you give in to that, then now there's two unhappy people and it's never good. Yep. <laughs> it's not it's it's so it's so funny because like as a kid they tell you you know treat everyone with kindness treat people how you would like to be treated and it's so true if, if, when you do you can you see people change it may take a little bit but people generally like they want to be respected yeah. you know they want to have that feeling of importance that's the greatest feeling you can give somebody and so when you do that they're immediately going to kind of like you no, that's all so, true. I've never really cared that I'm a female. <laughs> I kind of forget about it. And I'm girly yeah. too, so. <laughs> and then that that actually makes you shine even brighter because the reality is that you are, but you don't concentrate and focus on that. And that, that's even more powerful in that sense. So, very cool. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, like the whole, like, you know, bringing in diversity, it's, you know, that it's a diversity of thought. You know, all of us think so differently and that's what makes us so unique and if we were to focus on that we could really just change and be so innovative with technology or our ideas or anything that we're doing no you're absolutely true i guess my my next question just seeing like how <laughs> i want to be careful because i don't want to get in trouble but uh especially with with web developers like there's a stereotype of like they're behind these computers and they have the blue glow on their face and they don't look around and they're introverts. But obviously talking to you, anybody who's gotten this far into the conversation, they know that you are a charismatic person. If they've watched your videos on Instagram or YouTube, they see that you're this warm, fun, loving person. Uh, tell us tell us about the like what got you into the, doing the YouTube motivation. And also that's going to ask me to ask you about the doer who could out hustle Jay Z and, and what that yeah. means to you? <laughs> okay, so touching on the the first part about um, being like the introvert type person, I think um, we do have a tendency to do that, especially during work. So the but working, and I went to my headphones on and I head down. I'm working. I'm in work mode, and that's because I I, I come in with a job to do. I have a checklist that I go after every single day and I know I need to hit in order to make my um, estimates, you know, yeah. on timeline. And so it work, yeah, it is sort of like the heads down typical programmer. You would, that's what you would think if you saw me working. Yeah. Um, as far as outside of that, uh, um, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, generally a really happy person. I, like you said, I make these videos, um, they're called Monday Motivations. They come out every Monday my YouTube channel um, and they are kind of just tidbits of things that have either happened that week or that month and I keep track of different things that have happened or if I'm feeling low or not good about myself and the ways that I've turned it around yeah. you know different things that we I think everybody struggles with you know and something big in technology is you know imposter syndrome huge. and you know <laughs> Letting people know that we all deal with it and nobody's perfect and nobody knows everything. And like the stuff you see on social media, it's like 10% of what somebody's actual life is, you know, yeah. if that much. And for yeah. the motivational stuff, I kind of wanted to put something out there that it was a little more positive mm. and that wasn't so harsh. Sometimes you can hear the motivational speakers um, kind of be like all or nothing mentality and I think that you know trying to create you know balance and motivation throughout your op, like every aspect of your life not just career is very important and I think it's a more fulfilling life definitely and it, it's huge mm -hmm. to see that you know there are hard times that that that's that was the biggest thing for me when um I started realizing that other people who were aspiring to do uh, pretty cool things as well that they were having hard times. It wasn't that everything was, worked out perfectly all the time. Um, the code does not always go through every, every time you, without <laughs> errors and everything like that. So yeah, it never does. 
That's why never I, does them the first time. Absolutely. So, learning from coders, <laughs> like you, you can learn some awesome, uh, you know, just lessons for life. <laughs> just, just getting there. The details are important, and sometimes you got to focus on the bigger picture and just. You know, sometimes you can put a project aside, especially if it's a really hard day, and then come back to it. And then you have that epiphany. You're like, really? That was what yeah. was, you know, holding me up before? Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because, like, that same technique can be re applied to your actual, like, life. Like, yeah. say you're having a problem with a significant other or even a friend. Mm -hmm. Instead of reacting in the moment or trying to write a bunch of crap code, it's better to step away, clear your head, and then come back into the situation or back into the code with a clear head. Absolutely. And I haven't faced any real world problems, but I've definitely, not like, uh, well, yes, I have like that, but I <laughs> use that, I mean in code, I haven't faced any real world uh, code problems. All my problems have been in free code camp and code academy, but yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine uh, you know, dealing with hundreds or thousands of lines of codes and, and just finding that one issue. But the patience and the focus uh, and the commitment, like, I love that. And that's what I love about web development. And I, I'm, I'm a student of it, not as dedicated as I want to be, but uh, I, I respect the art. Like, and that's what it is. It's art and science to me. It really is. And I think, you know, patience is huge. And it's something I'm learning because I'm a very impatient person. Um, I like to go, 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 go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to get things done. I like to be efficient. I think everybody does. Um, and so programming has really taught me to chill. Like, mm. yes, you can go fast, but when you take your time and actually understand what's going on, mm -hmm. um, you're going to run into that same issue again. It's just solving it differently, you know? So once you solve it one time, you have, um, knowledge of how you did that and you can take that into the next problem you know definitely so when you were when you were growing up did you have uh mentors in your life or was there a, a lack of mentorship or was that something that you were introduced later on in, in your life so we talked about definitely yeah. later on i yeah. mean I, yeah later on i was pretty independent yeah. growing up um my yeah pretty much yeah, definitely later later in life, yeah. How do you think that affected you, having it later, vice, uh, vice earlier in life? You know, I don't know. Uh, um, I feel like I've met so many awesome people with, like, the different jobs that I've had to do, like, yeah. just great people. And I feel that I've always, like, kind of, I've always asked them, like, I've, I'm very candid. I'm like, I really like you, and I really admire what you're doing. <laughs> Can you show me how to apply that to my life, yeah. which isn't directly mentorship, but when you ask somebody that and you're actually serious about it, they like, they'll tell you and yeah. they'll help you and you can see that. And I feel like I've done that a lot with people, especially people that I've worked with at previous companies that I'm like, wow, you're just doing such amazing stuff. Like how, how do you do it? And I think that really helped me with my work ethic, Yeah, you know, working. I mean, we do work a little lot but I feel that it's I feel like I'm actually getting somewhere with it you know no, instead of just working to work definitely no that's pretty awesome if uh if, if someone approached you uh I mean obviously following you on on YouTube and seeing all the amazing things you're doing big fan on Instagram they said Brandy you're awesome how can I get you to be my mentor what are your expectations um if we were to do that, what, what would you tell them? If they were seeking me as a mentor? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So people have approached me or on Instagram have asked me. And as of right now, I've, I've said no, mm -hmm. um, just because I'm getting married pretty soon. And <laughs> yeah. there's, you know, just a lot of life things that are happening. Yeah, um, definitely. There, but if somebody did approach me about that, it would have to be they would have to show a level of commitment first mm -hmm. that they're serious about what they're wanting to do. And that's through like a series of questions. So there's been people that have emailed me, you know, asking me to look through their projects, look through their GitHub. Um, GitHub is, you know, basically an area where you can keep all your projects that, and people can 
see it publicly. Um, if you're a programmer, employers usually look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if people are serious about wanting to get a job, which is a lot of times, so like, how do I get a job? So I'll say, okay, well, let me look at your GitHub. Let me see your portfolio. Mm. And then let me see your social media. Like, what's your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle? And so kind of going through those questions, you can kind of gauge how serious somebody is if they either don't have those. Um, and then from there, you're like, okay, okay well, let's me back in two weeks and see where you've gotten with your GitHub and your portfolio and your social media. Because if you're serious, you can get that stuff done in two weeks, you know? Yeah. But if you're not, well, then I see you're probably not going to be serious about where you're actually trying to go. Like your, your level of commitment isn't going to be there. So that's something I always want, like, try to gauge with people first, because at the end of the day, if if they're not committed, then you're wasting your time and they're wasting their time type thing. No, absolutely. So talking about dedication and and making sure that you're, you're ready for some challenges coming up, if someone were to ask you, okay, how do you get ready for an interview, uh, especially web development interview, if it's a big company. Uh, do you have any experience in that area or anything that you'd be able to offer? Yep, I have been interviewed at IBM and Microsoft. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. IBM, I passed, yeah. um, I but then I ended up passing on the opportunity because I did not want to move to Texas yeah. at the time. Um, Microsoft, I did not get the job, but I learned a lot in that interview. Um, so going to a larger company, you need to be, um, depending on what your role is. So for IBM, I was, uh, I had a, it kind of worked out. I was applying for a front end position and and I ended up knowing a girl that worked there. So she actually kind of pulled a few strings for me to join her react team. Mm -hmm. She heard that I did react. So um, you have to make sure you have a portfolio that's clean, um, a, a good GitHub. They're going to code test you. Generally, they will have you build something on your own. They'll give you two to three days to build something, probably over the weekend. Um, they'll let you pick the framework, um, but they'll tell you what the project needs to be, like an API that you need to use. Um, for mine, I ended up recreating Instagram. <laughs> So I, re- <laughs> so I rebuilt Instagram, but it was just for um, NASA, so space photos. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. You could like it and do all this stuff, and it was really fun. And so after that, they're like, okay, well, she passed that, but now we need to see if she can pass a verbal. So mm-hmm. you also need to study questions, like basic questions about whatever it is that you're interviewing for, whatever, if it's front end, you should know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then whatever framework that they use. If you're going for a back end position, you would need to then study for that that specific thing. So there's all these kind of different things that you can study for depending on what your interview is. Um, and then when I was in when I was at Microsoft, that was a very hard interview. It was yeah. about five and a half hours, five hours. Um, yeah, with multiple people, that's and that, hmm? that that sounds brutal. It, it really was, and the, the the funny story was, um, so I had a job at the time, yeah. and I did not, not want to miss work, so I took a I took a red eye out to the interview, and got like. And then I had to be the next day for about, you know, five hours, like I said, and then I had to fly, take a red eye home. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was very intense. But um, what I learned there was they really care about um, the projects that you're building and your knowledge behind them. So they want to know the why. Okay, why did you, why did you do this? Why did you pick this framework? Why did you use this API? Things like that. And they just want you to explain to them. Yeah. Ex- explain how things work type stuff um but to me that that was so nerve-wracking and intense and great experience um but did not end up getting that job which was i was really bummed about that but no that's huge <laughs> like how many people you. can say they did that <laughs> 
Well, that's the other thing. I think people get so scared about interviewing or even applying for jobs. Yeah. You know, I haven't been out of school for very long with my degree. Yeah. And it's like, you just have to do it. And that's why I'm like, you, if you need a portfolio, build a portfolio. It yeah. should only take you a weekend yeah. to build one. Um, you know, have a good GitHub. Have, you know... There's all these different things that you can do that really don't take that much time. And so people just get so scared because they think that there's better people out there for the job, which there are, but you don't know if those people are even applying. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, it just have to jump in, you know, you have to kind of push all the doubt away and just, yeah. you know, kind of say, screw it. I'm going to go for it. And you're building that armor, you know, because those, those other people who are out there, they're still scared. And you're like, oh, I've interviewed at Microsoft. Like, what, what else is there after that? It's, it can't be any scarier than that. And so, yeah, your threshold is, like, ridiculously high now. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. That's, yep. that's unbelievable. And, and, yeah, you'll get to – you'll have that experience for the rest of your life where other people – I know, it's cool, you know. And then what is actually kind of funny is that um, Microsoft a couple months ago brought me back into their, brought me back in to like a local division here to help them with like social media yeah. for their developers. So it was kind of like full circle. No, that's super So cool. I got to come in and talk to about how to use social media as a developer because that's actually how I got the interview was yeah. on Twitter. So that's why I say for developers to be active on Twitter if you're looking for a job. Uh, it's it's kind of like you know meetups and connections and I've gotten all my jobs because of meeting people and yeah. people preach that all the time but it's so true it's when you connect with somebody or you engage with them they're more likely going to remember who you are even if it's on just Twitter yeah. or Instagram you know very true so if I'm trying to <laughs> get into the developer world I don't get, where should I go coffee shops like <laughs> uh, you said meetups where, where's the Reddit, like, where, where's the best forum? Um, I'm not a Reddit person, but, I mean, I feel like so many people are. Yeah, um, yeah. If you're looking to get a job, like, locally, yeah, meetups are huge. And also, don't just go to, like, the developer meetups. Go mm -hmm. to design meetups. Go to business meetups, uh, meetups, because those people are probably looking for developers. Yeah. So, when you go to different you know, types of them, you're going to meet different types of people and they're most likely probably looking for somebody because everybody is looking for a developer. Like everybody is. Yeah. And coffee shops too. Coffee shops are a great way to meet people. Um, we work from coffee shops all the time and we meet amazing people because they'll see you programming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they'll come up, talk. But they like, go, oh, what are you building? To start a conversation. Yeah. It, oh, just Skynet. No, I'm joking. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> people are like what are they talking about uh, I love those pictures though I'm I'm like I'm such a nerd for that because I'll, I'll like be on Instagram and I'm I'm jealous too it's kind of like when uh, kids pretend that they can speak another language and they're speaking gibberish but <laughs> you're looking at these coding pictures and they're all in, in uh, code and you're like oh I can read that and once you truly start understanding a little bit, it's, it's, it's such a big deal. And you start bragging to your friends, oh, I know what this line is. Or you show them that, hey, every when I realized every website, you could actually uh, inspect the code to a certain, yeah. to a certain uh, degree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You start going there mm -hmm. and you're like, I wonder what they're doing. I tried it with Facebook and I was unsuccessful. I'm like, I have no clue what this says. And obviously <laughs> that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's some complicated code, but you go to other people's like more simple sites like WordPress and, and it's someone else who made it and they're not trying to hide every single secret of the universe and it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to, to dive into that and see that world and then you can start a conversation. Hey, I was looking oh, yeah, at your definitely. website. I had a question about it, but uh, mm -hmm. would, would you say it's fair that a lot of the ability to learn code is, is it true that if you don't know something google it or watch a youtube video or is it way more complicated than that um a little bit of, it really depends what you're doing yeah so for the stuff i'm doing now um google really doesn't help me um i can read documentation on how to use libraries and how to use certain things but for the stuff i'm doing right now it's um 
it's, it's, I, I would not be able to Google it. I don't know people that are really, I just, you know, is that a good sign? That I, can't, I can't really Google which is, hmm? is that a good sign? You think like the fact that you can't Google it means that you're doing something not a lot of people are yet doing. So you're at the, I would say cutting edge of it, or at least at the forefront. Yeah, I would, I, the project that we're, that, that I'm on is, is awesome. And it's really cool. Um, you can check it. You, so it's showflow.tv, S-H-O-F-L-O.tv, um, is the website for the company. And that kind of will show you exactly what it is that we're building. But, um, mm-hmm. I'm building the mobile version of it. So mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff hasn't really been done, especially with React Native. Yeah. And it's really fun. It's really challenging. And that's why I wanted it because the previous job I was at, um, was a lot of WordPress and that yes, you can Google just about anything when it comes to that, yeah. um, or how to do an animation and stuff. Yeah. So it wasn't, yeah. And it was, we had a really fun project, but yeah, this one's definitely challenging. Yeah. Google has not been my friend. It's most of the documentation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole new world in itself is, is, good documentation and yeah it's a lot coding is hard it's, it's not easy but if you really love it and, and you're really interested in it it's, it's it's worth it yeah it's one of those things it's definitely challenging it's it's fun though it's at the end of the day like today i actually you know completed my checklist and i was like i'm done yeah. I'm, I'm leaving <laughs> i was like i finished um it's the best feeling because you can see it was that you were trying to accomplish like it's visual you know yeah, definitely very cool all right mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna ask you what is a resource that you use that contributes to your success that you would like to recommend to torch holders out there so in sense of like programming or yeah, so I think GitHub was re- a, a really cool one that you mentioned earlier. And you might want to, if you want to talk more about that one. Um, but yeah, any, any type of resource, Outlook, GitHub, uh, Slack. What, what's something that, and it could be any of those that I just mentioned um, that, that you use over and over that you feel like helps you uh, on the day-to-day grind. Well, okay, well, I use all of those. I use Slack every day. Yeah. I love Slack. Um, GitHub's awesome. GitHub is great, especially if you're learning programming, because um, mm-hmm. you can literally just search for yeah. stuff on there, and projects come up. Like, card, you could search JavaScript card game. Yeah. And all sorts of people with these repositories that have named it, something like that will appear. Um, and that's great because you can look through people's code. Mm-hmm. And you can see how somebody built something. And it's um, it's a tool for learning and also like kind of compare and to see like what other people are doing and what you're doing. You can also find like open source projects yeah. on GitHub. You can just do, there's a lot of different things and you can use, they have a tool called Zen Hub. It's an extension for yeah. um, GitHub. Yeah. And what that does is it lets you organize your issues So when you have a project, you're going to break your project out into milestones. And then those milestones are going to have issues associated with them. And you, then you go after, you know, each month, you go after each issue before you can, you know, close that milestone. And that's a great tool. That's what I use every day um, because you move the issues across the board. Like you have in progress and you have PR requested, PR approved and then merge to milestone. So you move it, you know, and it's just, it shows your progress of where you're at. Oh, that's super and cool. It's, yeah, it's great for like visual yeah. Um, motivation. Yeah, I'm de- that's definitely me. I, I like to see something too, even if it's just incremental, but it's still <laughs> something there. Is that, uh, would you say GitHub is collaborative at all either? Oh, completely, yeah. yeah. Yep. So generally, if you have a project, that you're working on with a company or anybody, you're going to use GitHub or Bitbucket. And um, you can have, I think it depends on your account, but you can have as many people as you want in that repository. Mm-hmm. And um, 
accessing that code and making pull requests and stuff like that, depending on what type of repository you have set up. So if it's like a company and it's private, mm-hmm. then you would have to request permission. But you can go on there like um, and rec- like find libraries that you want to use for your your project and fork them and use them and yeah, it's a great tool. Definitely. They, it, they're doing awesome stuff over there. I have a GitHub account. Again, I need to be. Oh, should I check out? Huh? <laughs> would you? Would Is you it, say? Oh, should I go and look at? Check it out. No, there is nothing on there. <laughs> I'm still trying to find out. I, I've like watched YouTube videos just trying to understand what to do with the account. But like, so I even read one one day that Elon Musk put, I don't know if it's true or not, but put um, the information behind the Tesla on GitHub open source for other car companies. So like that, that's just incredibly cool if that's true. But for people to come together and, and really just benefit from from that knowledge and, and the experience. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but I do think, you know, nowadays when we have this sense of like open source software, you know, making it accessible to anybody, anybody can collaborate on it. It really is awesome. And it's a huge sense of community yeah. around it, you know? Definitely. Can you, can you link, because I don't even know this, can you link to someone else's GitHub? Like, okay, I'm now a contact through GitHub, so you can find people. What do you mean? Kind of like fr- friends. Like oh, friend yeah, you account. can follow people. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can follow people. You can star people's repositories. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, you, you can find me. I have not- that'll be motivation for me to to make more projects. And then I'll I'll run them past you, someone who's actually experienced. And honestly, it. <laughs> when you're, yeah, because what even if you're following a tutorial, yeah, just push that up on GitHub and just have a tutorial. Because what it does is that if you are trying to get a job as a programmer, it shows that you're doing something, yeah. that you're making some sort of effort. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. All right, I gotta get my button gear <laughs> on there. <laughs> All right. Um, what is the biggest obstacle that you've ever faced? Um, and we can talk about if you had a mentor to help you through it or if uh, there was a lack of mentorship that would have been awesome but wasn't there. The big obstacle. Um, I'm trying to think. Just badass. You've been no obstacles in life. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Actually, no. Um, I faced obstacles of not knowing how to properly architect out certain issues. Yeah. And have you know caused a timeline to be pushed back several weeks. And I do think that it was because of lack of mentorship. Um, I think if you know, I had somebody there that was, you know, kind of not, not saying willing, but was able to kind of show me more familiarity with the application. It probably wouldn't have taken as long as it did. Yeah. So that, you know, I did definitely had wished that there would have been somebody else there with another set of eyes to kind of guide me in the right direction. Definitely. Especially when it comes to coding, like you're very experienced. I'm super, super amateur newbie, like wannabe coder. And there's always someone out there who is more experienced and, and better than you. And and that's humbling, but it's also exciting because that means you don't have to go out there blind um, unless you're doing something for the very first time. But then there's still someone who can help guide you through uh, complex problems similar to that. So. That's pretty cool, and and yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely agree. It's it's always good to have someone who can say, "I see what issues you're having here. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that?" Just to jog your brain, or or you know, get you on the right track. Exactly. So, what what is a poem, a short passage, or a quote that uh, you use today that keeps your passion on fire? What is a phrase or a quote? Yeah, 
or it can be a mantra or pretty much anything that, that you you pretty think much. about you listen to huh. i have a poster right on my, my wall um and it says hustle is the only controllable pillar of success um Inside so Lee, I look at it, I actually have it as my desktop background as well. Yeah. And it's, I look at that often, I think about, okay, Brandy, you're just sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> you know, that's your own fault if you're behind or if you think you should be somewhere doing something. You know, your the level or the outcome is always based on the level of input. Yeah. You know? And I think, you know, sometimes you can get lucky breaks and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, you put in work. There's reasons why certain things happen, you know, for certain people. It's because they're putting work in. They're putting time into the craft. Yeah. They're, you know, engaging with people. They're, you know, doing different things and being in the community, giving back. And, you know, you can look at them and be like, oh, all these things just happen to them. Right. But it's like, no, those are the people that are working you know they right. they care they genuinely want to make a difference kind of like what you're doing with this podcast you know you're seeking people out and speaking with them and engaging with them and surrounding yourself with people, with people and you're, you're putting in the work you know yeah i just think that's awesome yeah no, i appreciate that and i'm going back i'm gonna I'm, I'm making you revisit your quote the doer who can uh, out hustle? I like got chills when I read that. I was like, oh, "Snap! Is Jay <laughs> is Jay Z behind me? Like, is this <laughs> this is bad?" So, what like is that a fire inside you? You're just like you want to make it happen so bad. And it, so, if you and Jay Z were both on treadmills, like you you believe that that Jay Z is gonna fall on his face and he's gonna fly back, and Beyonce's gonna have to pick him up. Like, what 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 does that say to you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the whole, the whole quote is, I'm a developer, designer, and doer who could out hustle Jay-Z. Yeah. And so I think people get confused. So the developer, yes, I'm a programmer, but I'm also a developer of my life. Wow. And I'm always constantly developing. I'm developing my attitude. I'm developing my courage. I'm developing, you know, my stamina, all that sort of thing. And designer is, yes, I do design. I do like, you know, sketch all that sort of stuff, but I'm also the designer of my life. Deep, you're you know? a philosopher too. Not only. Um, and, <laughs> and the doer is because I'm not scared of putting in work. I have never blinked my eye when somebody's asked me to do something. I will stay at work till 4 a.m. if I know there's a deadline that needs to be there, whether that's an internal deadline or a deadline that's just set up. Oh, wow. Um, I have no problem putting the sweat and the hard work and the time. And yeah, the whole out hustle Jay Z, you know, it goes with the, the song that he sings. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a hustler and stuff. So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna make you sing it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, oh. One, um, one day. But yeah, that's just. <laughs> so that's kind of the whole thought behind that quote. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Like, thank you. Yeah, it, immediately when people see it, and especially I was like, "Oh snap!" <laughs> like this girl's not playing around. This woman's not playing around. She's <laughs> she's serious, people. Brandy is serious. <laughs> well, I know. I think people meet me. And I'm very. Um, I can be like, you know, very. Well, I am very serious, but very also like fun and bubbly. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like I know what I want to get out of life. For yeah, the most part, definitely. And I know that it's because it'll be because of like the stuff that I'm doing. Absolutely. Every day, you know, people look like, oh, I have this this goal in a year. Well, that year is made up of days. Mm -hmm. So what you do every single day is what gets you to that year. One hundred percent. Incremental progress. People do not realize the power in just starting. And then you're doing a little bit every single yeah. day and keep going. Yep. I told my wife, I, I, I was talking to her about, because she's from Germany, and I don't want my kids to learn German. And there's like, dad's stupid. Ha, ha, ha. They're talking in German. <laughs> so my thing is is learning also German before, before they do, so they can't do that. But 
incrementally and eventually even if it takes me five six years um which it's not going to but other people don't learn different languages in a lifetime you know and in coding coding is a language as well if, if you, they call it a language um again that incremental progress just sit down even if you're only coding on the weekends and then maybe you start coding during the week and, and you just keep going even if it takes you five six years People don't learn how to code in an entire lifetime. So definitely the power of incremental yeah. progress is, is, is huge. And it just takes someone to make that decision to start and then keep going with it. Yep. That's like the biggest thing is starting, just starting. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we, we're here with the developer, designer, and doer at the pass the torch portion of our show. Torch holders, we've arrived at the time in our program where our guest has one minute to pass the torch and leave a legacy. We all know a mentor is a person who's achieved a level of success uh, that we desire and can effectively guide us to success as well. Based on the success you, Brandy, have achieved at this point in your life, if you could pass the torch and leave a legacy message to your former self or anyone in a similar situation, how would you pass the torch in one hot minute? Boom. I, I would tell my younger self or any female and male, you know, for that matter, getting into the industry is, is believe in yourself, have confidence, and don't listen to what other people say. Um, especially when it comes to who you are as an individual, just believe in yourself, have confidence and don't let people try to bring you down and don't give into negativity because that's just going to breed more negativity. I always, always see the positive in all the situations and just believe in yourself that you can do it as long as you're willing to put the work in. That's it. Put the work in. Jay-Z, <laughs> Brandy's coming for you. With that, <laughs> this is Levante. And Brandy on another episode of Pass the Torch Podcast, reminding you to seek knowledge and pass the torch. <laughs>